Welcome back to 53 Questions with Reina. I'm Reina Ozpai, and today I will be doing 53 Questions with Lara Silva, who plays Eden in The Chosen. I never got to meet her in person, but she is a huge role model for me, and I just think she did an amazing job. She is she plays Simon's wife in The Chosen, but also she she just she's such a strong female lead. It, I just I can't wait till we can meet in person and let me let me just bring her in here. All right, there we go. Hi, Lada. How are you? Hi, Reina. I'm good. I'm so glad I, I'm finally getting to like talk to you in person. Yeah, <laughs> sort of, sort of. Right. But, well, um, I guess this is our in person <laughs> of, of the times. Such an amazing job in the chosen. I'm, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, today I'm wearing, you know, the chosen merch. Of you are decked out. <laughs> Looks great. Um, it's a little rainy here in Florida. <laughs> it's probably the coldest it's ever going to get. This <laughs> so, you know, I'm wearing a hoodie and I have the chosen beanie on, but. Um, I love it. And I love your background too. Thank you. But it's, the beanie's not in stock anymore. So if you see me selling oh. it, like thousand dollars on ebay well you'll know why yes it's wanted that beanie is wanted <laughs> All right. are you ready i'm ready okay here we go how old were you when you knew you wanted to be an actor i guess there's like two ages so i was 10 when i did uh, my first short film and i was like obsessed with being on set it was for a family friend and then i didn't think about it again until i was 23 so a lot of time had passed before i you know thought about it so wow. yeah 10 and 23. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big yeah. <laughs> What was your favorite TV show or movie growing up? Um, Disney Channel and Nickelodeon. So like any Disney Channel movie, like Nickelodeon shows, all that. Loved all that. Like Keenan and Kel and Amanda Bynes. Oh, so those are my favorite. Favorite movie of all time? Cartoon or not cartoon? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Just what? Uh, um, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, okay. I used to watch that all the time when I was yes like, on repeat <laughs> all the time. Any posters of famous people on your wall? Growing up, um, yes, I had NSYNC, I had Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears on my wall. Those were the days. <laughs> and what's influenced you the most in terms of your acting? Growing up, I was. I just really enjoyed watching like all of Will Smith's movies, um, the comedic and non-comedic ones, Jim Carrey. And then as I got older, um, someone who really influenced me was Alice Braga and she's a Brazilian actress, um, Emily Blunt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Best acting tip you've ever received? It would have to be working from a place of experience is always stronger than imagination. Ever done any theater? Yes. Um, so when I first started classes, acting classes when I was 23, um, we started with theater scene studies and we put on plays for our family and friends. What attracts you to a role? Um, so what attracts me to a role is not just someone that I can really relate to, but also something that really challenges me, um, something that I can really just research and search within myself and find out new things about myself um, and something that can take my career to the next level. How did you prepare to play Eden? I definitely did a lot of searching within myself um, just to find parts of me that could come alive in Eden um, because a lot of what I brought to Eden wasn't written on the page and um, I reached out to my acting coach and, you know, we, we worked on it and, um, I did a lot of prayer too, because, you know, Eden isn't really spoken a lot about in the Bible. So, um, I asked God to really help me bring her to life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> Thank you. Any traits that you and Eden have in common? Yes. Um, we're both family oriented. We love really hard. Um, but we're also a little bit uh, feisty at times, <laughs> and um, just really strong women, yeah. How do you think Eden has all the patience to deal with Simon? 
Okay, yes. So Eden definitely had a lot of patience to deal with Simon um, because she was just grounded and she loved him so much. And she really saw him the way Jesus saw him, not the way everybody else saw him, um, which I think just helped a lot. Yeah. Favorite thing about working with Shahar? My favorite thing about working with Shahar is just how prepared he came and he had this energy about him. He really created this space where I felt comfortable and um, I, it, it was just, it became almost easy and effortless because he was so attentive and just so sweet about everything and making sure, you know, I was okay and like giving me the space to really take my time. And that was amazing. So Eden was stomping on grapes. How long did it take <laughs> to film that scene and did the grapes stain? So the grapes, they did not stain my feet, but they left my feet so soft. I was like, wow, oh, we, women, we need to try this. Like it just was like this natural, just, it, it was awesome. My feet felt great. Um, <laughs> and filming it, it felt like it was like, it felt like it was two hours, but then I couldn't really remember. And so I actually texted Justin Overland. I was like, Hey, how long did that scene really take the grape scene? And he's like, Oh, that was about half a day. It was like six hours. And I was like, six hours. I was like, Whoa, that's a long time, but it didn't feel like that. Cause it was my last day and I was pretty sad. And so I guess it just went by really fast in my head. Favorite memory from the chosen. Favorite memory from the chosen. I think just connecting with everyone um, off set, I guess, or when we weren't filming and really talking to everyone and getting to know them and where they came from and just making like family. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, my I mean, favorite every, memory. I can't even choose because everyone was like so nice. And I know. It was just such a great experience. It was, yeah. Can you share something interesting about any of the co-stars and the chosen without getting yourself in trouble? Um, yes, I can share something and you, you probably, you guys probably already knew, but, um, Liz Tabish, she was close to almost giving up slash like quitting, giving it a, you know, acting a break before she booked the chosen. And so, um, that was really awesome to hear and just to never give up because you never know. When you have downtime on set, what are we most likely to find you doing? Hmm. It depends on the scene because some of the scenes I, you know, I didn't really have a lot of time to like talk in between. Um, but for the most part, you can find me at craft services because I really love the snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Has working on the chosen changed you like as Lada? Yes, it definitely has. Um, it's made my faith stronger because it made me realize that the reason I even started acting and really going for it was after, like, after I got a strong message from God saying like, this is what you're meant to do and I will help you. And I just, um, after booking The Chosen, it really made me realize that he was right. <laughs> and yeah, it's just, it's changed me. I've become just a lot more, um, just aware too of, of other people and, um, and who they are. How does Dallas bring out your best work? He is an incredible director. He, um, I just, I remember this, one of the scenes when he was describing, um, what he was kind of looking for and he described it as like, uh, the <laughs> being like protective mama bear mm -hmm. in a way. And, um, he's just so good with like pinpointing exactly what he sees and what he envisions and he's really good at explaining it. And so I think he brought out the best in me because he believed in me and was just so great at explaining what he needed. Mm -hmm. Speaking of directors, I know mm -hmm. you recently worked on a Gary Wheeler film. How mm -hmm. was that experience? That experience was amazing working with Gary Wheeler. He is so funny. Um, and I'm just really thankful for him and the team on his film because they saw something in me that a lot of casting, you know, may not see. And I got to play a, 
police officer. And that was one of my dreams to play because it's just, it's, I don't know, I was able to like bring out a different side of me. And uh, my father was a police officer. So like, it was really fun to be able to like pull from that and work on a film where I got to do that. And it was great. Coolest location you've ever filmed on? Uh, North Georgia in the mountains. It was so beautiful in the fall. Uh, that was the coolest location for sure. Ever needed a stunt double? Twice, actually. So the first time um, was on Queen of the South, but we didn't end up um, using her. I did my own stunts, which wasn't a whole lot, but <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. Um, we ran out of time, so they, they just kind of like showed me something really quick where I could do. And so I did that. And then the second time was for the film with Gary Wheeler, and it was just um, some driving scenes. So they wanted to make sure that I was safe. <laughs> Breakfast at Tiffany's or a Roman holiday? Breakfast at Tiffany's. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> do you ever get nervous before an audition or filming? Absolutely. Um, every time. Yeah. Uh, especially with auditions. I think when I'm filming, I'm a little, I'm, I'm in my wardrobe and I'm, I'm already there and I know I've got this. But um, especially with auditions, I, get, I still get nervous. Yes, auditions are just... Mm -hmm. They're awkward. They're awkward. Yes. <laughs> How do you handle the nerves? I handle the nerves. I honestly, I take, I take a deep breath and I kind of just give myself self affirmations that, you know, you were meant to do this. You've got this. God's got you. Um, and I have to get over it because if this is what I want to do, this is, this is what I tell myself. If this is what you want to do. You have to overcome it. Let's do it. And then I do it. <laughs> Do you have any dance training? I do. So in elementary school, I was in a performing arts school and I did tap, jazz, and ballet. But then I stopped after elementary school and I wish I continued. But yeah. <laughs> do you sing? I do in like my house or in the shower. I've heard that like my voice is decent, but I'm just too scared to sing in front of people but maybe you can help me with that. <laughs> <laughs> Best concert you've ever been to? Beyonce and Jay-Z when they came in town. It was really good. On your playlist? Everything, everything from yeah. pop. There's Taylor Swift in there. There's a lot of country music. I love country music. There's um, some really good worship music too. There's a little bit of indie bands. That not many people know about just everything depends on my mood there's also some movie scores in there that I like to listen to when I'm studying hmm? how do you start your day how do I start my day I wake up um, I have some coffee and I read a devotional with my coffee usually and then um, I watch some Good Morning America <laughs> Yoga, boxing, or just running on the beach? Hmm. Okay, so I love to lay on the beach, not so much run. So I'm going to say boxing. <laughs> what would you do with your day if you had absolutely nothing to do, and who would you spend it with? Well, like most days these days, since we're all at home, um, I spend my day with my boyfriend and our dog, Nike, and we go through walks in the woods and we do some hiking trails too and then come home and I watch TV or read a book. What's a quality you look for in your friends? The quality I look for in my friends, um, people who are really honest, that are loyal and um, really support me in everything I do. Yeah. Name one thing you can't live without. Um, okay, I cannot live without my favorite chips and their Cape Cod salt and vinegar chips. I love those. <laughs> Very good. Three more things you'd bring with you on a deserted island. Okay, three more things I'd bring with me on a deserted island. Uh, body wash, <laughs> suntan, suntan lotion, and a towel. <laughs> That's all I need. If you could have one designer create a dream red carpet dress, who would it be? Ooh, um, Versace. I feel like if you have a gown made by Versace, you've really made it. Mm -hmm. 
And it was yeah, <laughs> beautiful gowns. <laughs> Tennis shoe or like you know any running shoe or, or heels. Sneakers or tennis shoes. Yep. Anyone that would make you starstruck? Will Smith. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Mm. Okay. It's going to have to be shape shifting, like Mystique in X Men. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you own any pets? Or I know you own Nike, but uh, yes. tell us a little bit about him. Nike is a chocolate lab. He's so cute and he's really lovable. Um, but his barks are really loud and scary. So when we're walking him, you know, sometimes he gets so excited and he barks at other animals or people, but he's just excited, but people get scared. Uh, my dog Bobby, <laughs> is a huge barker. <laughs> and anytime one barks, the other one just trots. They just go. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they don't even know what they're barking at, but they mm-hmm. right. They've got each other's back, so whatever it is, they just wanna they wanna bark. Favorite sport? My favorite sport to play or to watch? I guess okay. So my favorite sport to play is softball. I played softball, and then my favorite sport to watch would be soccer. Go Atlanta United. <laughs> favorite player? Dwayne Wade. Favorite book? Uh, okay, this is a little bit, it might be a little bit embarrassing, but it's the Twilight series, the Twilight Saga. Those are always be my favorite books. Who are three women that really inspire you? Three women that really inspire me would be for sure my mom. She's one of the strongest women I've ever met. She's been through a lot. Um, my aunt, and I have. I guess my acting coaches are who are two women, one that I studied with in Florida when I was younger and then now in Atlanta. If you weren't an actor, what would you be? I would be either a nurse or a microbiologist. Yeah. What other languages do you speak? So my first language uh, was Portuguese and I learned Spanish as well, living in South Florida. And I'm, Currently teaching myself French. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> Download Duolingo. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> you grew up in Florida. Mm-hmm. What do you miss most about living there? I miss most my family because my mom and dad are still down there and my sister, my one of my sisters, but I, I do miss the beach and the warmth and palm trees. Oh, I miss palm trees. Palm trees are everywhere. Little they tiny are beautiful. Just, I see those all oh. the time. I need to buy a fake one for my for my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> what three words describe you best? Okay, um, I would say compassionate. I'm adventurous, and um, I'm a quick learner. That's yeah, I'm a quick learner. If you had to go by a different name, what would it be? Uh, my mom told me that she was going to name me Camilla, so I guess that would have been it. Yeah. (laughs) What emoji do you use most? I use the happy poop emoji a lot. (laughs) Because it's really funny. (laughs) If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? If I could live anywhere in the world, it would be Italy. Even though I've never been there, um, I would just eat all their food and gain all the weight. It'd be fine. (laughs) If you could go back in time and tell 10-year-old Lada something, what would it be? Um, when I was 10, I, a lot of kids were pretty mean to me. So I would tell myself um, to believe in yourself and to not listen to those bullies because your life and your dreams are going to surpass theirs. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's very good, important mm-hmm. advice. Final chance to tell the world, mm-hmm. is there something you, we haven't covered that not many people know about you? Um, yeah, I guess we could. So going back to, uh, I wanted to be a microbiologist or a nurse, but um, my microbiology teacher in college, when I, um, when I was taking some classes, she really encouraged me to be a microbiologist because I, I was just really good at like 
looking through like the microscopes and finding out like the genus species names of like the bacteria and the viruses and what, where you could find them. And when we would took, we take these exams and there's no multiple choice. You would just have to know what, what you're looking at and how to spell it and everything. And, um, I did really, really well. And I was really proud. And, um, she encouraged me to, to be a microbiologist. Mm. Um, but I, decided that was not my calling. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really good in science. Yeah. So not many people know that. Last question. It is from a fan and I did use this one before in another interview. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a really good question. So I'm going to use okay. it. I'm going, sorry. The question okay. is from a fan named Christian. He is from the Philippines and he wants to know if you could go back in time in history mm -hmm. and ask Jesus one question, what would it be? If I could go back in history and ask Jesus one question, um, this is a question that I've heard before, and I've always thought um, thought of it as well. And it's if mankind had never sinned, and he'd never had to come, you know, down to earth and and born to save the world, would we be better off or worse? Oh, that's a good question. Actually, yeah. Now I'm like. Right. Like if, if mankind had never sinned and he never had to be born, would we be better off or worse without him? Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. Right. It's a deep, <laughs> it's a deep question to ask Jesus. <laughs> All right. So since that was the last question, um, mm -hmm. thank you, Lada, for joining me. This was a lot of, of fun. And I hope the fans get to know you better from this. And I, I hope so too. too. Um, this is, like I said before, it was a lot of fun. So thank you. And this was so fun. Thank I you. That we can meet in person one day and maybe even do an acting job together. I hope so too. I hope I get to see you in season two somehow. <gasps> they should write us in together. You should come over to my house and we'll cook. Yes. Simon and Peter's house. Simon Peter's <laughs> house and Ian's house. <laughs> okay. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Bye. Hey, it's Dallas, I'm the creator of The Chosen, and yes, season one of The Chosen is complete. All eight episodes, they're available right now. You can look up The Chosen in the App Store or Google Play, and we're easy to find. You can download it and be watching within minutes. And in fact, it's unprecedented technology. You can connect to almost any device you have directly, and you don't even need a subscription. So I hope you'll check out season one of The Chosen right now. Name one thing you can't live without. Mm, I cannot live without cable. I also have Takis or Takis, Takis, whatever. <laughs> takis? Oh, the snacks? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, those. Mm -hmm. So, final chance to tell the world. <laughs> That's good, Ken. Michael's sneezing. <laughs> That's okay. Name a real person in a history you would like to portray. Eleanor Roosevelt. Even though I know we, know, we don't look anything alike, but <laughs> love to play her. <laughs> What's your Starbucks order? Um, I have two of them. Lump of sugar free vanilla. Don't she just pulling in with Yes, here, just write it down and hand it to the <laughs> sugar pump. <laughs> I know, we're the worst. <laughs> um, if you could have any wild animal as a pet, what would it be? Uh, a peacock. They would look nice and pretty in the front yard. <laughs>